Dr. Manhattan is one of the most powerful beings in all of pop culture, but how does someone go from normal human to naked nuclear god? Let's get technical. Ooh. First appearing in the Watchmen graphic novels in 1986, Dr. Manhattan is actually the government code name for a Dr. John Osterman, a PhD physicist working in a nuclear physics lab who was ripped apart atom by atom in an accident. Eventually though, somehow in that same lab, Dr. Osterman was able to piece himself back together, first as a creepy floating nervous system ghost, and then eventually as the full ripped blue boy. In this form, he was basically a god, but that's not gonna stop us from questioning his powers and maybe trying to explain some of his abilities with real science. First, why he blew though? The less fun answer to that question, of course, is that Dr. Manhattan is blue simply as an artistic choice. It's visually distinct, and it's based on a previous character named Captain Adam. Sure, but since Dr. Manhattan is so often depicted as glowing, I think we can actually use that fact to infer something interesting about his body and its structure. But not like that kind of stru- if Manhattan here, named after the Manhattan Project, of course, is glowing, then his body is either emitting light directly or emitting something that goes on to generate light. And there are a number of ways an organism such as John here could be glowing in this way. He might be bioluminescing like the luciferin inside a firefly butt, or he could be glowing, fluorescing like the carapace of a scorpion in response to ultraviolet light. But none of these processes seem to really be what Dr. Manhattan is doing. Here are our carapist minions, obey me! I think that Dr. Manhattan is emitting something, and no, I don't think he's just simply emitting light with a wavelength around 450 nanometers. No, I think something closer to his atomic nature is going on, something a lot more dangerous. On August 21st, 1945, 24-year-old nuclear physicist Harry K. Doglian Jr. was placing tungsten carbide bricks around a core of plutonium, a recreation of which you can see here. He was trying to figure out what bricks and what orientation and how many of them you would need to reflect enough neutrons back down in on the core to make that core of plutonium go critical. It was a criticality test. On this fateful day, however, he had an assembly that looked like this and his measurement device told him it was about to go critical. He was gonna take everything apart, but then he dropped one of the bricks. And the moment the brick hit the assembly, it went critical. And according to Doglian, he experienced a flash of blue light and a wave of heat. If some radiation or particle has enough energy, say it's coming from something highly radioactive, it has a chance to smash into other atoms and molecules. And when it does so, it can excite those atoms and molecules, electrons, or even rip electrons from those particles, which go on to then recombine and excite other atoms and molecules. In either case, when these atoms and molecules return to their unexcited state, they get rid of some of that excess energy in the form of photons of light. And when this happens in nitrogen and oxygen molecules, which makes up the majority of Earth's air, those photons are of the blue light wavelength. And you can see this for real if you look at something like an open air cyclotron beam and you see this brilliant electric blue. Whoa. What I'm suggesting is that Dr. Manhattan, as part of being the kind of being that he be, is emitting high energy particles from his atomic body and ionizing all of the air in his immediate vicinity to produce that faint blue glow that we know is possible. And ironically, even though in the comics, John here was framed for causing cancer in his colleagues just by being around them, not only would our explanation explain the color, it would actually cause cancer if you were near him as ionizing radiation has the ability to destroy and mutate DNA and directly cause cancer. That's what happened to Harry K. Doglian Jr. as he died 25 days after his experience of a blue glow. It's kind of grim, but it makes sense. And why are we pixelating him? He's wearing, he's wearing blue undies. 
Dr. Manhattan's powers go a lot deeper than this though, like all the way down to the very fabric of the universe. One of John's more famous feats in the comics is when he teleports himself all the way to Mars. It's a fantastical example of his control over his own matter, but it also might be an example of his mastery of quantum mechanics. What happens when you throw a ball at a wall? Well, classic smart boy Newtonian mechanics dictates exactly what you'd expect. It just bounces right off, but quantum mechanics does not necessarily. Now let's say that I have an electron and this barrier, this wall is on a similar scale, very, very, very small. Quantum mechanics says that if I throw this electron at this barrier, there is now some non-insignificant chance that it doesn't bounce off. It passes right through. And to fully understand this behavior, we need to stop thinking of electrons as solid objects. Ow, ow. Sorry, on the smallest scales, particles like electrons can also be understood as waves. And these waves are less like waves on an ocean and more like distributions of probability because an electron isn't really in one place until you measure it. It's more likely to be found in one spot versus another. There is a lot of complicated math and physics that we are skipping over here, but just for a second, consider our barrier again. Quantum mechanics says that if we throw our particle wave at this barrier, if the probability is good enough and the barrier is thin enough, there is a non-zero chance that our electron will be measured on the other side as though it just teleported straight through. This sounds fantastical, but we observe it all the time and it's called quantum tunneling. It's the reason why the sun keeps going. It resolves some of our best images in our best microscopes and it's helping the flash memory that is in the device that you're watching me on right now. Or me is, or which one is me? Because if they're all thinking my thoughts, but how might quantum tunneling get our blue boy to Mars though? Well, if he has conscious control over every single piece of his body, every atom and molecule, which it seems like he has, then he might be able to instantaneously arrange every wave function that makes him him in preparation for an unprecedented quantum tunneling event. If the doc could control himself all the way down to the quantum level, then he might be able to greatly increase the probability of measuring him across a giant barrier that classical mechanics says he wouldn't be able to pass. Maybe the barrier that is all the air and all the distance and all the space between Earth and Mars. He could then collapse his wave function and then be measured on Mars as though he teleported there. And it would be the first big muscled blue butt on Mars, which would be breathtaking, amazing, breathtaking, wow. Incredible, breathtaking. A walking nuclear incident that could teleport anywhere at will would be strong enough, but Dr. Manhattan's fundamental abilities are his most impressive. Why is my face being pixelated? What is offending you? There are four fundamental forces of nature. If you had real access to electromagnetism, gravity, and the strong and weak nuclear forces, as Dr. James Kikalios, the science advisor on the 2009 Watchmen film suggests Dr. Manhattan does, then you wouldn't just be powerful or strong. You'd be able to weave and unweave the very sweater of reality. I'm tired of people saying fabric. Scientists often like to think about how the universe would change if the fundamental forces were different. Could stars form if gravity was weaker? If the strong and weak nuclear forces were changed, could complex life ever arise and molecules chain themselves together into things such as we? What if the charge of an electron was a different constant? But this is exactly Dr. Manhattan's power. Think for a second about the ability to change all of the forces holding himself or you together all at once. With a wave of his hand, he could atomize you. And we've seen him do that before. To Rorschach, Rorschach's dead, remember that? With control over the fundamental forces of nature, Dr. Manhattan could just add protons and neutrons and electrons to whatever matter was under his influence and basically create anything. He could float a hunk of lead to him with reduced gravity and changing electromagnetic forces and then realize the centuries old dreams of alchemists and add a couple of protons to this to turn lead into gold. Not that Dr. Manhattan would care about such things, meh. 
He could just go around and force helium atoms together in a fusion-like process to solve the energy crisis, which is actually canon in the Watchmen comics and the film. With powers like this, Dr. Manhattan would be like a walking Big Bang, being able to shift and shape reality to his will, because when it comes down to it, there isn't much more to reality than the laws of physics and this crude matter. <laughs> And just think of Dr. Manhattan's perception of time when he can alter what is in this way. If you knew your exact space-time coordinates right now, you could use them to construct a four-dimensional representation of your slice of space-time that we call a hypersurface of the present. Cool name, right? It represents where you are right now in space-time and everything that could be considered simultaneous to you. Not your past, not your future, but everything that is now. Now, if Dr. Manhattan could change space-time to his will and alter it fundamentally, think of how his slice of space-time, his now, might change. In terms of these hypersurfaces, you and I only experience sequential nows. But in Watchmen canon, Dr. Manhattan frequently states that he experiences all of time simultaneously, like being able to experience more than one slice at any one time. And think how that would change your perception of who you are and the world if you could experience everything all at once. What would it be like to experience the full dimensionality of space-time? Well, how do you spend most of your day? I think many of us find ourselves lost in thought at any one time. We're either worrying about the future or making plans or reminiscing about the past or thinking about things we could have done differently. Very rarely do we find ourselves exactly in the now. If Dr. Manhattan could experience all of his time at the same time, would you blame him for feeling less human and being less connected to humanity? So much of what defines us as people is our imagined relationship to the past we can't change and a future that we haven't experienced it yet. If Dr. Manhattan can experience all of this, then it might be reasonable to assume that his humanness would just disintegrate. Dr. Manhattan is basically if the laws of physics had a will, a, a big naked will, and I love that. Not necessarily the naked part, but I love that, unlike for most other superheroes, the question of why Dr. Manhattan is so powerful is a fully answerable question. More than just about any other super being, Dr. Manhattan is because science. Hey. Do you know where all the other scorpions went? Because I bought a lot of scorpions. If you see any scorpions leading, you tell me if you see any scorpions. There's a lot of scorpions laying around. If we can't explain Dr. Manhattan's blue glow with high energy particles coming from his body, a weird thing would happen too. You would see him even with your eyes closed. When high energy particles move through a medium faster than light does in that medium, as high energy particles can in something like water, or say, the vitreous fluid in your eyes, it can create kind of like a shock wave of light called Cherenkov radiation, and it produces a flash, like a blue glow. You can see it when nuclear reactors start up. But if Dr. Manhattan was near you and your eyes were closed, you would still get flashes of light in your eyes. And we know this because this was reported reported by Apollo astronauts. They reported seeing flashes of light even with their eyes closed when they're sleeping a couple times a second. And that would happen with Dr. Manhattan. There's no escape.